so many fun reasons to grow orchids and many of those all culminate into one thing when the orchids bloom. More often than not, orchids take 11 months to bloom after which we get the pleasure of seeing the blooms for about three weeks. That is the reward for months of care. However, there are some orchids that don't just bloom a single bloom, two or three spectacular blooms. Nope, these orchids bloom hundreds of blooms. While some of the bloom shows will only last a couple of weeks, others will last for months. I have some of those kinds of orchids in my collection and I figured that a video celebrating those orchids in my collection may also inspire you to get them and enjoy what they have coming your way if you do. Each orchid I showcase in this video will have a brief care summary which I hope will help you in your decision making process should you want to get any of them for yourself. Enter once again my easy and expert stamps but they are only there to create awareness about the temperature requirements. Every orchid is easy if its needs are met. Some of these in this video however do need to get lower temperatures relative to the mean temperature that is in everybody's environment to bloom really well. So. Welcome to the video, it's good to have you here. In alphabetical order, the orchids that I have in my collection that will go from 0 to 100 blooms. The first one being my Colmenara Masai Red. 0 to 100 blooms from an XL Oncidium Alliance orchid in my collection that, while it tolerates my low winter temperatures, it would be much happier with temperatures no lower than 15 degrees Celsius. I consider this one an easy grower because of its size. The roots are large and chunky, similar to cattleya roots, which makes it an Oncidium that is not going to be susceptible to rot as easily as other orchids in the Oncidium lions, <coughs> twinkles, which we will get to. But my Masai Red is not fragrant. However, when the spikes start to grow and then the dark, rich red blooms with their even darker, deep red velvety lip open, the show is insane. The bloom duration for each individual bloom is approximately 10 days, while each spike can hold 40 blooms without needing to be staked. That in itself is an insanity because the blooms are not small. Masai Reds can easily have two, sometimes three spikes per suitable, huh, and then put 40 blooms on each spike. You do the math and the blooms will last for about two months, of which a total of six weeks it is in its prime. While not fragrant, the show is quite something else. As mentioned, this orchid is XXL, even without the spikes, but with spikes of 80 centimeters from the base of the pseudobulbs to the top, the orchid increases in size for a couple of months. I am super lucky that it can tolerate the low temperatures on my patio because there is no room in the end for this one in the winter grow space. <laughs> But now we come to a genus that has this 0 to 100 blooms phenomenon with many of its species, but I can only speak on those that I have in my collection. And we start with Dendrobium aphyllum or Anosmum. Whereas I cannot speak of Anosmum doing what my aphyllum does just yet, but seeing as I have it, I'm including it because it has the same potential and basic care requirements. Both are deciduous, both need a temperature drop, both have bare canes during the cooler period of the year and both explode into hundreds of blooms that last approximately two weeks. But oh my, what a show during that time period. Both are also very generous with their cakey production, allowing for easy propagation, resulting in even more bloom potential in years to come. While cakeys are normally a sign of stress the orchid is undergoing and for that reason it produces cakeys as a means of the survival of its kind, for both a film and a nosman, keikis are part of their growth habit and necessarily not an indicator of stress. My aphyllum has developed a very faint fragrance of roses, but the sun and temperatures have to be just right to be able to appreciate that it exists. The fragrance being faint is not a deal breaker because every single bloom on an aphyllum has the appearance of having been kissed by pixie glitter. The effect is magical and breathtaking. The Anosmum, on the other hand, is not just a bloom showstopper when it's grown to its full potential, but the fragrance this orchid exudes perfumes the air with a wonderful, intense raspberry fragrance. Smashed, 
fresh raspberries. It always makes me hungry for a good helping of eaten mess or a raspberry pavlova. <laughs> Sticking with the genus, Dendrobium berry Oda is up next. While I consider this an easy orchid to grow in my climate, I am identifying it as expert because of the lower temperature that this orchid requires in order to be happiest. It is not deciduous, but it is a happy grower and also generous on the cakey production. However, the berry odor will reduce the cakey production once established in a pot for a couple of years because normally after the stress of travel, acclimating and possible repots, the orchid will produce cakeys in the first two years of having experienced stress. Once the orchid is settled in, however, the cakeys will not feature as strongly anymore and reduce in quantity as time goes by. Dendrobium berry odor doesn't just come with a spectacular bloom show, but it knocks it out of the park as well when it comes to the beautiful honeysuckle heavy molasses fragrance, which gets stronger the more light and warm temperatures this orchid is exposed to. It's absolutely magnificent. The bloom show will also last at least two months because the spikes are sequential to a certain degree. The lower blooms will open slowly and then bit by bit the spikes start to open each bud at a faster pace as temperatures increase until the whole orchid looks like one beautiful bunch of flowers that could have come from a high class florist. The proportion of the orchid and the church spire like upright spikes are something to behold. Up next we have another dendrobium and that is dendrobium hibiki. Wow, this orchid while not fragrant is something else as well. The advantage of growing this orchid is all in the fact that it is compact, which makes it a wonderful orchid to have in a collection. The colors of the blooms of this orchid are insane. When the bright fuchsia pink blooms contrasted by the neon orange lip are in the sun, without sunglasses, this orchid makes my eyes weep for joy, but also because the colors are so psychedelic. The little bloom pom-poms may make you think that they're not hundreds of blooms, but each pom-pom has at least four to five blooms which are bunched up in a cute little pom-pom of fun. The bloom duration of this orchid is also beyond anything that orchids are known for in some climates. In some climates, the bloom duration will last for as long as five months without the colors fading and without the blooms losing their magical sparkle. An insane orchid that I'm so happy to grow and encourage anyone that can find it to add to their collection. And while we're on the subject of dendrobiums, I have a dendrobium complex hybrid that does the same thing as many of its compadres that we get in garden centers or big box stores. These complex hybrids have blooms that vary in color and they are plentiful. My dendrobium blooms a beautiful white, crystalline, sparkly white with a blush of pink. And it comes with a fragrance that I absolutely adore. Freesia. Freesias do not last long here in southern Spain, unfortunately, because I just love freesias. But I have my nobly complex hybrid and it perfumes my blooming alley with a fragrance of freesia that adds to the welcome of spring for the duration of two months, sometimes two and a half months. Moving away from the dendrobiums in my collection, I have an epidendrum hybrid that doesn't look like much of an orchid when not in bloom. But when it blooms, I have a beautiful show of green and white blooms. While not fragrant, they make up a display that looks like new grapes. The bloom duration is approximately six weeks and thankfully it is a reliable bloomer or else the size of the orchid would make me think twice about accommodating it in my limited space during the winter months. This orchid is robust, but it would much prefer to have warmer temperatures during the cooler months of my climate and a lot more light that I can provide. It is a reed stem epidendrum that grows taller structures than I have if the conditions are right for the orchid. When in bloom, all the headaches of accommodating this orchid fade because she blends in beautifully in my blooming alley when in bloom. The petite green and white blooms freshen up the space with the appearance of their clean color combo in a cascading spike. I hope that you're enjoying this video so far and if so please help me out by giving this video a like. It really helps the channel. And another thing, if you feel so inclined to share the video to your social media platforms that are orchid related then wow, if you would share this video I thank you for that as well. Muchas gracias. <laughs>
Now we get to an orchid that has the capacity of flowering 100 blooms. While mine has not quite reached that target, I hope to one day prove that it is capable of doing so, and that is Fred Clark Yara After Dark Black Pearl. From 0 to 100 is fitting for this orchid not only because of the blooms, but once the orchid wakes up out of winter dormancy, its speed of growth will keep you on your toes when it comes to watering and fertilizing. A single bulb will produce two spikes. Each spike can hold 20 to 30 blooms. So, as the orchid increases in size and stature with multiple growths, 100 blooms on this orchid are not out of the question. And I'm working on that from here on in, because after having been divided into three divisions, a year after that stress, I still got 41 blooms in total, which perfumed my winter grow space with the most delicious fragrance of cinnamon and ginger spice cookies for five weeks in total. The blooms are an intense burgundy color, which when not seen in the sunlight will make them look pitch black, while showing lighter spotting, which appears as dark red, as if somebody is looking at you. It's quite spooky. <laughs> the spikes on this orchid need to be accommodated because naturally they grow pendant and they will grow longer and longer before they stop and then the buds start to swell. I personally have not seen spikes on these orchids ever being staked so some kind of pedestal will be necessary to accommodate the spikes allowing the buds to open freely. I cannot describe just how breathtaking the blooms of this orchid are how mouth-watering the fragrance is. No matter how hard I have tried to capture the blooms and all their magnificence, the footage does not do them justice. And wow, I look forward to getting a hundred blooms one day. This video would not be complete without Cousin It, which in actual fact is Maxillaria variabilis. This orchid is a staple in my collection. I would not be without it. And thankfully, I can accommodate its size in my climate. The blooms, while small, are out in force when this orchid blooms. Hundreds upon hundreds of blooms on growth that bloom sequential, allowing for a bloom duration of up to five months. The individual blooms will last a good two weeks. As other buds open, the orchid just starts to fill up with all these clusters of yellow. My maxillaria is not fragrant, but I have heard that some have a caramel fragrance, which I would love to experience. Now let me address Insidium Twinkles briefly. <clears throat> I had three, and I'm in the process of trying to rescue my last Twinkle Red Fantasy, which has started the process of rotting at the base because of a scale infestation. Unfortunately, while Oncidium Twinkles have their rightful place in a video like this, I find them difficult to grow in the setup of my preference, which is Lekka and self-watering. Meanwhile, having scale at the base of the tightly packed pseudobulbs makes it a very difficult orchid to rescue. Still, Hundreds of highly fragrant blooms grace this orchid, and when grown well, especially mounted, they will perfume any room with a mixture of vanilla or sugar syrup or a combination of the two. Basically like a candy store for the duration of the bloom show. Mine used to bloom for six weeks without dropping a single bloom, which is not bad considering how small the blooms are. Meanwhile, waiting for the spikes to grow can be agonizing because that can take up to five months. <laughs> And the last one I can think of that I have in my collection, which I just think is absolutely remarkable, is Prostechia Garciana Alba. There's also the regular Prostechia Garciana form, which is a lot more purple in it. It's just one of those orchids that will bloom hundreds of blooms. While they do not bloom all at once, this orchid's main blooming period will have at least 50 blooms at the same time. Straggler growth will mature and bloom following the main bloom spectacle, extending the bloom show to two months easily. While individual blooms may last up to two weeks, the staggered blooming gives us blooms for three months straight. The fragrance is also divine. It's a very elegant talcum powder perfume that increases in intensity when the temperatures warm up. Direct sun is not needed for this orchid to be fragrant. The added charm of these blooms is that they too have a magical pixie dust sparkle on their petals and sepals. Capturing them in footage to do them justice is also hard, but being a compact grower and vigorous grower, this orchid is a fun one to have in a collection. 
These are the ones that I can think of so far in my collection that guarantee a fantastic 0 to 100 bloom show. As other orchids mature, and I'm thinking of my Ancelia Africanas, I hope that I can add them to this category as well someday. But they are still not there yet, but I'm working on it though, <laughs> just like with my Black Pearl. Here's the thing, if you have any orchids in your collection that you would like to add to the comments, in case anyone wants to see more options, that would be awesome. Thank you for that. And thank you so much for watching. Your time and support is very much appreciated. I say it. I mean it. Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition, though, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.